Welcome to the Farms.com Risk Management uh, Grain Commodity Marketing School video series. This video series being brought to you and sponsored by DeKalb Brand Seeds to educate producers across Canada on how to do a better job of that grain commodity marketing. Well, today in our 18th video, we're going to be looking more closely at hedging with options. We'll define what options are, how options are traded, how options are priced, and then we'll give you some examples on how to use options for hedging purposes. So. What is an option? Options are financial instruments that give the buyer the right, but not the obligation, to take a specified futures position at a specified price. The specified price is known as a strike price, the price at which the underlying futures position can be taken. Whether the futures position is taken is at the discretion of the buyer of that option. Strike prices are set by the commodity in increments. For example, corn is in 10 cent increments, uh, canola in $5 increments. This is a chart showing you the blue column is a strike strike price showing you the 10 cent increments. Uh, the blue column again is showing you the $5 increments in canola options. So, what are puts and calls? There's two types of options. There's a puts and a calls. If you're a put buyer, it means you're bearish, you hope the price will go down. If you're a call buyer, you think uh, the price is going to go up, you're bullish. Calls give buyers the right, but not the obligation to go long futures at a spe specified strike price. Puts is the exact opposite, gives the buyers the right, but not the obligation to be short futures at a specified strike price. Option prices are, are called premiums and are negotiated by the buyers and sellers. Um, options for grains are traded until the approximately the third Friday of the month before contract maturity. So corn, beans, canola, wheat will trade till about approximately June 20th. Options uh, for lean hog futures and currencies are traded into the delivery month because these are settled with cash. Options are not traded on margin. There's a premium, there's a known amount. You're never gonna lose more than that premium. So for example, if a corn option is trading at nine cents per bushel, each contract covers 5,000 bushels. That's nine cents times 5,000 times the number of contracts in our example here. Um, that option will cost you 450 bucks US. So, uh, there's two components to an option. While premiums, again, as, as we said earlier, are decided between buyers and sellers, there's two components. There's intrinsic value and time value. Let's explain intrinsic value, and then we'll go on to time value. Intrinsic value is the difference between the strike price of the option and the underlying futures price. So for example, a person who owns a $75 put in a $70 market, because the futures is lower than the strike price, the, uh, the um, uh, intrinsic value is worth $5. Vice versa, a $65 put in a $70 market, because the futures price is above the 65 strike, that option is worth zero. So intrinsic value is either zero or a po positive number. A risk premium is like a, a form of insurance. Think of it as a form of insurance, what the buyer of the option pays the seller to accept price risk. Um, time value erodes over time and is option's worst enemy. The, a lot of that time value depends on volatility. The greater the volatility, the more the time value, the closer the strike price to the underlying futures price, also the greater the uh, time value. So once you've purchased a call option or a put option, there's three ways you can deal with it. You can offset it. So if you've purchased a put option, you can sell it to offset it and you pass on that right to a third party. You can exercise it, which is done very, very seldom, less than 1% of the time, and then you can allow it to expire. If your put option or call option expired, then the opposite would happen. In, in the put option example, your cash price is actually gonna be higher once you deliver that commodity. So let's go through a quick example with corn. In our example, we're assuming that there's a corn producer somewhere in North America that is thinking of uh, uh, hedging 5,000 corn bushels to be harvested in late November. He can sell off a December futures at 720 a bushel today. Alternatively, he can buy a December 720 strike, put option for about 87 cents, sorry, 87 cents, uh, which is 87 times 5,000 times one. Okay, 5,000, one contract covers 5,000 bushels. We'll examine some of the outcomes when prices fall versus when they rise. So uh, in this July 2011, sorry, this is December 2011 corn options. Uh, again, the blue column is the strike price. You can see um, 720 strike price put option. This, the right side is put options. The left side is the call options is worth about 87 cents. That's how you read that. The highlighted, um, the 720 
strike put option again is worth 87 cents per contract. Each contract covers 5,000 bushels. Um, so in this case, the producer would spend about 4,350. The 720 less, the cost 87 cents is, is the producer's floor. He's basically protecting a 633 per bushel floor, plus or minus a local basis. If we go back to um, that example here, a 750 strike price would actually be an at out of the money call option. The 720 is at the money, and then say a 620 would be in the money call option. Most out of the money call options hardly ever make money. Uh, 90 to 95 percent of options usually expire worthless. Um, and again, that's because if that's happened, your cash position is that much higher, particularly with a put option. So let's go through an example with corn where futures are falling. So in our example here, we're assuming that uh, futures are at 723 today. Your basis is minus 50, so you got a net price of 673. We can short futures at 723. We've explained futures, hedging with futures in a prior video. Um, and we can buy that put for 87 cents. Now, if the price starts to fall in November, it goes to four bucks, less the basis, the net price is 350. Um, you're gonna buy back futures at four, okay? You've sold them, so you're gonna gain 323. Um, less the cost of the option, so, you, go to, so you, you end up with the option side of it gaining 236. You add that back to your cash price at harvest, and you get a net of 636. Okay, so um, futures do work, selling futures do work when the underlying commodity futures price is falling. And options also work in this case because you expected the price of corn to fall and it actually did. In our next example, we're looking at corn when futures are rising. So in this example, we're assuming that futures by November have r risen to 850. Um, so the first outcome is that the producer does nothing and uh, he wins by selling in November at 850 plus or minus a, a basis. Um, however, he can also sell futures. He's going to end up losing on the futures about a buck 27. So you have to subtract that from the cash price. And then he can also buy that put again. That put's eventually going to probably expire worthless. He might have some time value left, but he's, he's then going to subtract that cost. Um, from that basis and futures price in November. So his net amount is 713. Still gonna make a little bit more than selling in June at 673. So key insights here, buying uh, puts is, is a substitute for selling futures. Hedging with futures is more effective when the underlying commodity is falling. Hedging with options like insurance, options give you a protection against the downside but allow for opportunity for upside. Cash flow is predictable with options. You can go to the CME group, www.cme.com. You can go to farms.com, www.farms.com, and you can go to the ICE Exchange to get quotes on options. I've showed you today how to read them. In um, uh, future videos, we'll talk about how to place these orders with your broker. In summary, I hope uh, I provided you with some understanding on how uh, options work, how you can hedge with options, how they're priced, uh, hopefully they can assist you in managing that risk going forward. Again, think of options as a form of insurance and just another tool in your arsenal to help you manage through that. Um, um, maybe some opportunities uh, or maybe your physical markets close or maybe you got question marks about production. Options can help you because you don't have that physical risk. In our next video series, we're gonna look at part one of technical analysis. We're gonna look at those charts to help you again, provide you with m perhaps some more information, more insight into managing that risk going forward. Until next time, thanks for watching us. We've hoped that uh, we've provided you with some insight and understanding in our topic today on options, hedging with options, advantages, some shortcomings. Till next time, thanks for watching, take care.